Hey there, it's Lenny McGill with the Glock Store Performance and Custom Shop right here in San Diego. And today I want to show you a little bit about some of our training we do here. So if you come down to our shop here in San Diego and or our new shop that's going to be in Nashville and you take one of our one day training classes, this is one of the things you're going to do. Just one, but it's a real important one because I believe it really will take your shooting to the next level, both self-defense and even competition. Uh, this is our GunFit program, okay, and I'm going to talk about it real quickly and give you a brief overview. I've done some videos before on it, uh, but I wanted to kind of encapsulate it here because this is something I really believe in. Uh, if you think about self-defense shooting, you know, most shootings are pretty darn close and most shootings are pretty darn fast and it's over, okay? Uh, I shoot IPSC, a USPSA, I run around, I like to run and gun and do all that fun stuff. Uh, it's great fun. It's not necessarily the best practice. Uh, but it's great fun. It's not uh, as far as self-defense practice. If you're really interested in self-defense practice, you know, you really need to stand there and learn how to shoot multiple targets with multiple shots, not just two, okay, whereas a double tap is what IPSC and uh, USPSA is all about, but multiple shots, three, four, five to a target, because that's what's going to take you into a true self-defense reign, because when you are actually involved in a shooting, you're typically not shooting one or two shots at the same target. You're shooting a lot of shots, and you want to train yourself to be able to do that, and this exercise, this game that I'm developing here, will train you to do just that. And you'll see uh, your strengths and weaknesses. So this is kind of one of our basic exercises, exercise number three. There's actually three targets. You can see our target that we're aiming at, okay? It's a simple uh, diamond that represents center of mass for the body shot and the same thing, center of mass for the head shot. So uh, it's a game that we're playing to score points based upon the uh, time it takes us to go through the exercise. And we'll talk about that uh, scoring process in just a little bit. But you see the targets are just eight and a half pieces of uh, paper. This one's cut in half. Uh, it's a simple, inexpensive target. You can go to our website and download this uh, as a PDF and print them yourself. And I'm going to invite you to go ahead and, and play and practice uh, with me and try to beat my score, all right? <laughs> but this is the, uh, uh, the target itself. And uh, again, five points inside the center of mass hit, three points anywhere on the paper and zero points on the cardboard or off the paper. So, you know, the key is, is not to drop any points, of course, and the key is also to shoot really fast. The um, headshot, same thing. Uh, basically, five points inside the diamond, three points on the paper, and then zero points around. Now, this particular exercise, like I said, number three, has uh, three different targets, and they are basically uh, three feet apart this way, and three feet apart this way, and three feet, uh, three feet apart above. So it's Three feet, one step, here's the other two targets, it's six feet right here, okay, and then we're going to go back. Now, as this exercise develops or this whole thing develops, we're going to have different classes, but right now the class that we have established is uh, distances, okay, so the distance at which you shoot will also dictate your skill level and your times. The farther away you are, the more stressful it is in a sense to have accurate shots in time. So that said, here we are at uh, basically uh, one, two, six feet would be kind of a beginner. Three would be, say, your uh, intermediate, and four, which would be 12 feet from that target, is going to be what I call your advanced. Go back another step, another 50, say 15 feet, another step, 18, and then 21. So you'll have master, grandmaster, and then of course at 21, gunmaster. Okay, so can you train yourself to do this exercise at 6 feet, 9 feet, 12 feet, and even 15 and 18, and have the same times and same accuracy? And that's a big challenge, and I'm going to tell you, right now you probably can't do it. I don't, matter, I don't care how good you are, once you start to introduce a little bit of distance, your speeds will slow down to improve your accuracy. But how much? and how good can you get? It takes practice. Now, so speaking of practice, what I like to do uh, when I come up here, and this is our training room upstairs. You can see we've got classrooms we do here, and people come in here from all around the country to take these classes and to become better shooters. We do a lot of private instruction, and we do small groups. All right, so keep that in mind. We don't have 100 people here at one time. We really give everybody a lot of attention. When you come here for a class, 
you shoot a lot, you study a lot, you train a lot, and one of the things we like to do is laser practice. All right, now laser practice to me is one of the secrets of learning to shoot well because it's inexpensive because once you install the laser, it's basically free, all right? So this is my laser 19. I've got a 17 over there I'll show you as well. It's got a factory trigger and it's got our reset trigger inside of it. This is something you buy and I'll show you that in just a second as well as a laser module. So every time I pull the trigger, a laser beam spits out as if it's a bullet. And if I pull it multiple times, that's part of the reset trigger. It allows me to do multiple shots from target to target. That's the key to this reset trigger system that I've developed and it's been around maybe for 10 years. We're starting to sell a whole bunch of them because people are realizing how important laser dry fire practice is. Because the skills you develop right here in this range, the skills you develop here in your, in your own room, shooting at multiple targets, shot to shot, easily transfer themselves to the range. And I'm gonna prove that to you here very shortly. All right, let's go ahead and look at the packages of what we do. Again, like I said, that's my 19. Here's a 17 we've got set up uh, with uh, the um, reset trigger with a pyramid trigger. And it has the laser module inside. Again, every time I pull the trigger, a laser pulls out. This trigger pull is significantly lighter than the factory trigger pull by design, okay? This one I call really your exerciser. It's gonna exercise your trigger finger and your trigger finger muscles uh, more so than this because it's just a little heavier. And if you can master this and do this uh, on a regular basis, your trigger finger is gonna have a lot of skill to it. And that's a learned skill, trust me, to be able to pull the trigger fast, as well as, it's really important you listen to this, as you pull that trigger, you're not disturbing the sights. Okay, so, I'll take a, a moment just to go right there with that because that's a very important point. Most accuracy problems happen as you pull the trigger. So as you're pulling the trigger, you're yanking a little bit and disturbing the sight picture you have lined up. So if you think about that, get all lined up, you come up, sights are on, as you pull the trigger, you're yanking it, moving it one way or another. Now that's an interesting concept because most people say, oh, I don't do that. Well, you probably don't on the first shot. But when you're shooting multiple shots and you're going fast, that's when you start to see trigger fatigue, trigger finger fatigue, as well as you start to use the big muscles in your hand to yank on that trigger to get it to, to go bang. And as you do that, the whole hand is contracting. And because of that, the gun is moving, all right? <clears throat> the technique that you wanna to use to avoid that is, well, there's two, two techniques. One is right hand, I'm right-handed, or your strong hand as you hold the gun. Get it up there as high as possible so you can control the recoil because the recoil is gonna also affect this. But also, when you get that grip, you know, this is a 60 to 70% grip, okay? I could squeeze harder, but I don't want to because what I wanna do with my left hand is I wanna squeeze my left hand onto the right hand, and I wanna actually capture the right hand with my left hand onto the frame. The other thing notice is that I've got a lot of meat covering the entire frame. I am engulfing the frame with my hands. And if you understand that concept, that this strong left hand allows you to keep your right hand a little bit looser, which allows you to manipulate the trigger faster without the larger muscles in your right hand. So now we're just concentrating solely on the trigger finger itself. And that allows me to manipulate the trigger without disturbing the sight picture, which is one of the master skills or master keys to successful shooting. Manipulation of the trigger without disturbing the sight picture. So this practice helps you identify that. So let me show you what we've got here. First of all, this is our reset trigger. Like I said, I invented this thing probably about 10 years ago for Glock particularly because we are the Glock store. And if you notice, it's a modified factory trigger and a new striker or firing pin. Uh, it's an assembly that you get just like this and basically you just drop it right into your gun. We've got videos online to show you how to install it and uh, you know they basically are drop-in pieces and work really well. 
So that's the reset trigger. Comes in a nice little box. This is the laser module. Okay, now they're sold separately. You can buy the laser, or excuse me, the uh, reset trigger by itself. The laser module is uh, sold separately as well. You can buy that by itself as well. However, the combination of the two together allow you to do the multiple shots and target to target. Otherwise, you have to rack the slide every time to make this go because this little cartridge right here, if you look in here real closely, you'll see there's a little black rubberized end piece. And that responds to the firing pin. Every time the firing pin hits that, a laser beam will come out of the front and it goes down the barrel and it basically uh, is lined up with this uh, alignment pipe. And all that allows this thing to shoot really center of bore. And it operates on the small little batteries that come included and we sell all the accessories and it's uh, just a, a great tool to not only practice with and improve your skills, but to verify your skills. Because, you know, dry fire, of course, has always been the uh, key to um, uh, shooting well. It's actually handling the gun on a regular basis, dry firing and, and manipulating the gun and being comfortable with all that. That's something you want to practice at home. Unloaded gun, of course, right? No ammunition in the room, all that good stuff, right? We've already talked a lot about that. But if you're new to this, again, it's real important that whenever you dry fire, you don't have any loaded magazines in the room. You don't have any ammunition in the room. Everything's kind of separate so that you cannot inadvertently load this thing and actually squeeze around off because that's, you know, what it's all about. You know, you don't want to do that. So you want to keep that stuff separate so that you don't, like I say, inadvertently have an accidental discharge in your house of all things. Your wife would not be happy. Your kids would not be happy. Your neighbors would not be happy. And you would be embarrassed. So what I tend to do is practice, again, in a sterile environment. And I'm going to suggest you do the same thing. So uh, the, um, uh, the key to dry fire practice was to manipulate, handle the gun. Now, so years ago, before I invented the reset trigger, I would actually you know, uh, be able to bring the gun up and just see that the sights are on, on target, boom. And I would actually line them up, and I would actually squeeze the trigger. And you know, so it would be boom, boom, boom. boom and you do that several hundred times. But what I had to do is I had to rack the slide every time for the regular Glock. So it was rack, come out of the holster, thump, rack, and do it again, thump, rack, okay? Now, after thousands of repetitions and you know, several years of doing that, I realized there's gotta be a better way. And the better way was basically the reset trigger. And the reset trigger allowed me to uh, shoot those multiple shots and make it much more realistic. And the realistic is that now I can actually go not only from the first target, second target, third target, like you would in real life. You can shoot multiple shots and practice and practice and practice. So this skill that we're developing here with this reset trigger takes itself right into the range because if you learn to index the gun properly and you learn to hold it properly to the point where you are getting good crisp laser dots, then you know you, there's not a lot of movement in the gun as you're pulling the trigger. Now, let's talk about that real quick. So let's go down range here and see if I can actually uh, show you a difference. Now, so we're looking at the target. If I have a real good grip and I pull the trigger, you'll see there's just one dot. Okay, and I don't know if you can see that on camera or not, but boom. If I yank on the trigger, you'll see there's a blur. All right, and that's one of the things you can see. See how there's a blur because I'm, there's movement. If I go ahead and hold, it's just one, one dot. So as you practice with a laser, you can start to observe that well, yeah, I can see that the, the gun's all over the place, and I'm exaggerating, of course. Or I've got nice pinpointed laser beams, and I know that I've got a good strong hold. And I will tell you, really, that if there's anything you pick up out of this particular video, it's going to be that left-hand technique. If you really want to be a more accurate, faster shooter, learn how to grab hold of that right hand with your left hand and squeeze it, dominate it. 
and keep that left thumb straight out towards the target so it's almost part of your aiming point. All right, so that's kind of what I'm, um, I'm going to show you here today is this uh, dry fire exercise on exercise number three with our gun fit program. Like I said, if you come down here to San Diego, you book one of our one day classes, you're going to shoot this a bunch of times. You will work with our laser and you'll probably want to take a laser home for yourself. Now we sell it in a couple different options. We sell, like I said, as a laser by itself, or excuse me, the uh, reset trigger by itself, the um, laser bullet itself. And we also do a complete upper that would just drop one all set to go so you can switch your uppers back and forth or and even better is a full gun already tricked out to laser it's a real gun now okay and that's one of the the beauties of this it's not uh your plastic toy it's a real gun that's been modified to shoot this laser module so we're going to go through our gun fit exercise right now and then i'm going to go down to the range and actually shoot it live and we'll talk about uh, how, how to get good scores down there. So what I would typically do is come up here, and I've already I had tons of warm up, and so I'm gonna go ahead and just simulate in my mind the course of fire. First, course is, first stage is one shot on each target going from left to right. So coming from left to right, I'm gonna start here and just come up, boom, 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 okay? So one shot again. All right, it goes pretty fast. Now two shots. All right, there's two and two more. Oops. Every once in a while I get a little trigger freeze there, but that's okay. And here we go again. There's three shots and coming left again. Okay. It's designed to you know, be fast and furious. Uh, we hope that we're gonna be able to do all these shots and keep our times really low, but keep all of our points inside of the five diamond. All right, so there it was, that's basically the exercise. So that alone is 36 shots. Now we're gonna do the same thing, shooting our heads. Boom, and so I'll do another 36 laser shots on the head. So here we are, just going one shot to head from the left, all fives. Had a little miss there. Now, two shots. Okay, two shots. And now three. Whew. Okay, now I will say to you that it does get tiring to manipulate the trigger 72 times that fast in that short a time. But that's the exercise. So now we wanna give ourselves a break, get our muscles to you know, come back and we do it again. And the key is, is the repetition here will train that finger, train your mind to see the front sight now, and also be able to index the gun. Now, when I say index, let's go ahead and I'm gonna look right down here with you. What I'm trying to do is bring the gun up to my line of sight. All right, now we will start this gun fit exercise basically on a stand. So everybody starts in the same spot. You can do that as, as much as you want. I saw a guy the other day doing it here and he was coming up and pushing out. I like to just keep here and come straight up, okay? Now, what I'm trying to do is when I come up, I wanna make sure that the sights are pre-aligned. So I wanna train myself to whenever I come up, boom, the sight, the front sight is nestled into the notch of the rear sight. It's already there. So I don't really have to look for it. I've already practiced enough that whenever I put the gun up, I know that the sights are somewhat pre-aligned, okay? Now, and that just comes with practice. So every time I index the gun, the sights are lined up, and that's based upon your grip and kind of your stance and really just a little bit of feel. How's it feel? If it feels right, feels like I'm on, then I know the sights are lined up and I'm gonna squeeze the trigger. If you're really good and you get good you know, practice and you understand yourself and you really understand how it feels, you'll feel that you missed. Because now we're trying to go ahead and be fast, remember? So we come up, we wanna be fast, boom. And the faster we are, the better and higher score we'll have. And so that'd be you know, really the goal. But you don't really have time to look at the sights. So at this distance, in this drill, what we're training ourselves to do this is really important. We're training ourselves 
to look at the target and through the sights. All right, now these are close distances and that's the way it's designed to be because in a real gunfight, you're gonna be looking at the threat. So you're not gonna really look at your sights. So you wanna train yourself to look through the sights. You want the sights to be in your sight line alignment, in your sight picture, but we want to be looking straight at the target and bring the sights up to the target. And you'll be amazed with practice. Now this is what I'm gonna tell you that, you know, I, I still amaze myself sometimes, that you can literally shoot doorknobs and keyholes across the room just by snap shooting them after you practice and practice that indexing technique that we just talked about, which is basically pre-aligning the sights as you bring them up. And keyholes across the room, you know, are pretty darn small. The idea being that you have a feel for how it feels in your hand. Everybody's a little different. I like to line the gun up so that it's basically lined up with my forearm here. It's straight down. I get up as high as possible without having snake bite here on this Glock slide because it will bite you. I mean, I can feel a little bit, but it's not gonna hurt me, okay? And um, then again, it's all about that left hand, keeping those thumbs pointed as my index point and wherever I point the gun, it will go. But in reality, wherever I look is where the gun will go. So that's what I'm trying to train, uh, train myself, is that my eyes are basically the the sighting picture, you know, I'm, I'm actually looking there, I'm just bringing the gun up to my eye and shooting. So I'm not really focusing on the sights at this distance. Now when we get back a little bit low, uh, farther, you know, things change a little bit and that's where you may want to just have that front sight part of your, you know, your, your consciousness. However, what I'm going to tell you again is as you train yourself from 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, you will find that at these distances, you can start to duplicate those times and that accuracy based upon your repetition of technique. If your technique is the same back here as it is right here, you're gonna have the same results. And the key is, is to practice, practice and practice and even some more. And you can do it with a dry fire. And that's why I'm really high on the reset trigger and the uh, laser ammo that we sell uh, that allows you to do this in the privacy of your own home, in your garage or whatever, you can set up this target. You can see it's not that far. I'm mean, 12 feet away. So that's any basic room I can do these targets. And you can print these things out, just paste them on the wall or, or whatever you want to do. This is just a regular IPSC target or, or IPSC-like target. And so the concept is, is that, you know, I come out here, you do this maybe three, four, five times a, a night, two or three times a week. A month later, you're going to be much better shooter. Just like that, just by doing these kind of drills. Coming up, one shot, boom, boom, boom. Coming to the left, or, uh, right to left. Two, and now here we go. One, two, one, two, oops, <laughs> one, two. <laughs> Hate to do that. And here we are, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Ah. Okay, you can see how my finger gets a little tired, you know, I mean, that's, you know, I, I, I hate to mess up on camera, but, you know, it does happen. So that's why we keep on practicing and get better and better. And so there was just 36 shots right there. We can do the same thing to the headshots as well. And again, the key is, is to uh, try to really, you know, pay attention to your technique. Always be a, pay attention to that left hand. Always pay attention to this trigger finger and where you're manipulating the trigger. You know, when you make a mistake, what happened? Why did I make that mistake? Sometimes, you know, it just freezes. You know, ah, ah. <laughs> but the key is, is to work through it and to just practice, practice, practice. So this is just a part of what you'll do here at one of our one day training classes. Uh, we've got some, uh, like I said, private lessons you can do or you can come down with a small group. Uh, bottom line is, uh, you know, you're not going to really find a lot of this style stuff at any other place. We do some things that are very unique. And one of the things that we can do that we haven't even talked about here is draw from a holster, whether it be a competition holster or a, uh, a duty holster, and do the same drill. Because if that's how you're carrying, that's how you're carrying. And of course, for you concealed carry people, we draw from concealment and do the same drill. 
and each one of those give you a different time because obviously the, the draw itself will add more time to it versus coming off a gun in hand like you would say in a home defense scenario. So this drill can really apply itself to a lot of different scenarios and a lot of different lifestyles and it will challenge you. The other thing you could do too is shoot, of course, with say a self-defense gun, a carry gun like a Glock 43, or your competition gun like a Glock um, uh, 34 which is what I'll shoot downstairs. So there's a lot of ways to make this training pay off for itself. And it all starts really right here by dry firing, refining your techniques, and then going to the range. And the other thing that I really like about this is you get a score, you get some times, and you can compare those as you progress. So let's go downstairs to our indoor range. We've got this set up. I'll shoot through it. We'll get a score and we'll see if you can beat me. All right, here we are inside of our tactical indoor range here in San Diego, California. You can see we can shoot in multiple directions at multiple targets. We don't shoot down lanes because that's really bad practice. The concept here is we want to shoot at multiple targets and different directions because that's what may happen in a self-defense shooting. So uh, I've got our targets set up in the same array that we did upstairs where we have basically three. There's a six foot distance here, three foot back for my center target, 12 foot out to the uh, center post. Concept being, yeah, that's a pretty good self-defense realistic distance. Uh, again, five points inside the diamond, headshots, three points anywhere on the paper. Anything off the paper is a miss. And we hate to miss <laughs> because it really kills your score. Uh, this is the score sheet that we have. It's pretty simple. First string, second string, third string, all the way through. We're going to write down our times. Uh, the time uh, is uh, activated with a timer. Uh, I've got uh, one of uh, our, our top instructors here, Matt Millinger, is going to actually uh, uh, operate the timer for us today. And you'll see him in just a minute. So uh, the uh, other thing is uh, the actual exercise itself, the distance, like I said, 12 feet. Uh, the class, which is going to be our intermediate or our advanced class. And then over here, we'll write down the points. Now, the uh, targets themselves, as you'll see, will have uh, the ability to put the points on there, too. And you can put your name on here, which is, you know, what I suggest. Put the target number. This would be target number two. Same thing with the exercise. So, we, you know, you can, you can keep these um, in a file. You can refer back to them, see how you're progressing over time. And that's really one of the main things is, is that uh, this uh, drill allows you to uh, realize your progress whether you're good or bad that day. Some days you're better, other days you're not, you know, but you can typically see a little bit of improvement. Now let me come back here to my table and what we're gonna do is uh, talk about uh, some of the uh, equipment we're gonna use here. Of course, I'll be shooting my Glock 34, my little favorite gun. Uh, and I've done this with different guns, but uh, today I'm trying to get a really good score, so I'm gonna shoot my, uh, my race gun. <laughs> uh, but I've done it with a uh, 43, I've done it with a 19, uh, because, uh, well, that's, you know, this is how you practice. You try different things. Uh, the ammo that I'm gonna be using today is a little different. I wanna show it to you. It's kind of new, uh, and a lot of people in the competition world are starting to hear about it. It's uh, this American Eagle, and it's a, uh, uh, what they call Syntec. And it's really a range ammo, okay? It's, it's designed for practice. It's not a self-defense ammo, keep that in mind, uh, because it has a, 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 like a coating, uh, and I'd say kind of like a Teflon coating around the actual projectile. Now, it, what's interesting about this, um, is that there's not a lot of recoil. It's, it's significantly less recoil than, say, just the regular Federal Red Box. All right, I mean, I'm just kind of blown away. Even the sound of the shot from the, the regular Federal 115 grain Red Box ammo to this one is totally different. Uh, and it could have something to do with this coating and could have something to do with the, the amount of, uh, uh, of gunpowder in here as well. Now, what other, uh, another interesting fact is uh, this is the 115 grain. The uh, competition shooters that I know, they love the 150 grain because it's a bigger bullet with a little less gunpowder and certainly less recoil. So all that said, if you're looking for a way to uh, introduce someone to shooting or you want to have a little less recoil, uh, try this ammo, okay? And, I, you know, we don't necessarily sell it, but I would say, you know, we sell it here at the store. We don't sell it on the Internet. But uh, if you can't find it, you know, give us a call. Maybe we can ship it to you. But um, the uh, uh, Syntec ammo is uh, a, a good bet for your practice and uh, certainly will get you through. Now, 
Okay, so all that said, we've got uh, uh, one other thing I want to show you. This is our new uh, uh, Plus 5 magazine extension. And it's pretty cool looking, looks good. Loaded up with a Syntec, loaded into the gun. You'll see what it looks like like so. Pretty nice looking piece. Uh, this is kind of important to have as a, you know, certainly a high capacity magazine so you can get through here without loading and uh, a bunch of magazines. Keep in mind the first string is three shots, next shot, uh, string is three shots. Uh, there's six shots, so if you have a 10 round magazine, it's time to change out. If you have a 17 round magazine, you can get through the next one, which is uh, 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 two shots per target, six, another two shots per target, 12, okay, so there, right there, you have uh, 18 shots in the first, uh, you know, uh, set of strings. And then the last string, of course, is nine, and nine again, and there's uh, 18 more. So it's nice to have a, a high-capacity magazine or one that has uh, uh, an extra round on it so you don't have to change the magazine out. Now you can do nine at a time, and, and that's kind of how I designed it, so you can shoot with 10-round magazines. All right, so there's all of our gear. We're going to gear up with our eyes and ears and uh, get our air on, and we'll shoot this stage and see if I can come up with a good score. You ready? I am standing here now with Matt Mellinger, one of the uh, best instructors I've ever met. He's been with us, with the Glock Store, with me for seven years or yes, so. Yes, seven years. Uh, he's been instrumental in our growth of our training program and in the overall business. Thank so you. Matt's going to run the timer for me. Thank you. He's got uh, our score sheet, which we just went over before. Uh, basically, he's going to put my times down, first, second, third, fourth. We're going to just do six strings so this thing doesn't take forever. But you can literally go out and do all the way down to 12 strings. But that'll be another exercise. When you come down here to shoot with us, we'll make you shoot 12. How's that? Okay, so here we go. I'm going to start with the gun in hand resting on the post. Everybody starts from the post, so it's all the same. Gun's unloaded. We're going to go ahead and load up now and get ready to go. One shot. Here we go. On each target from the left to the right. We got one shot left to right. Shooter ready. Stand by. 1.2. All right, here we go. Slight little miss there. I hate we to do that. We got one shot right to left. Shooter ready. Stand by. 1.42. All right, slow down just a little bit. Two shots now. Here we, here we go. go. We got two shots left to right. Shooter ready. Stand by. Two seconds flat. Mm, that's not good. We got two shots right to left. Shooter ready. Stand by. Ooh, 1.9. All right, and reload here. And now it's the last string, three shots. All right, coming around. Three shots left to right. Shooter ready. Stand by. All right, 2.45. We got three shots right to left. Shooter ready. Stand by. We got 2.32. And out. Clear. All right. Okay, let's get down and score them real quick. Give me a pen, Matt. Yep. Boom. boom, boom, boom. Okay, so we're going to look at this target right here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. All 12 hits. Not bad. Got to love that. 60 points. That's the max. And here we go here. A little sloppy. Uh, that's a five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and two threes puts me at fifty-six. Oh, hate to do that, but it is what it is. And here we go over here. One, two, threes again, and it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, there it is, ten. Okay, so there's ten. So that's also going to be 56. And that's not bad, but could be better. And that's why we're training. So now we're going to do the headshots. And the headshots is a little bit more difficult because the target's smaller. So let's go ahead and load our magazines. We'll come back and we'll shoot these heads and see how we can do. And then we'll go ahead and do our scoring. And like I said, I'm going to put a score out and I'm going to invite you to come and beat me. Okay, so we're going to now do the headshots be a little bit more challenging because it's a smaller target. But that's really a mental thing, right? Okay, if you can look at my group here, it's like, hey, they should all fit right here. So I should be okay. That one, maybe not. <laughs> but the key is right now is let's uh, really concentrate on the front side, concentrate on that left hand, really concentrate on, on, on putting that left hand and being tight with that, keeping that right finger loose so I can manipulate the trigger fast without disturbing the sight picture. 
This one's a little sloppier. It's a little farther away. I, I got to be honest. I'm going to have to take some time here on his heads. Okay, I will slow down just a little bit over here. Uh, I don't know why. You know, I'm always seem to be better with that first shot on the left side. I always seem that seems just to be the spot I want to end up. I, I don't know uh, why this is so wide in a sense. It's sloppy. That was my first shot. I swung over too much. Um, but, you know, I got to just slow down a hair just to tighten that group up a little bit. So let's go now. We're going to do heads only. And the challenge will be that it's a smaller target. But I want to kind of keep the same times. There you go. All right, Matt, you ready? See if you can keep me honest here. Okay. Loaded. And head only here. One shot. Left to right, it's boom, 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 boom. All right, here we go. Here we go. One shot left to right. Shooter ready. Stand by. 1.7. One shot right to left. Shooter ready. Stand by. 1.72. We got two shots left to right. Two shots. Shooter ready. Stand by. Two point three two. We got two shots right to left. Shooter ready. Stand by. Two point four eight. Okay, last one. Three shots. Here we go. Hammer down. Three shots. Left to right. Shooter ready. Stand by. That sounds good. All right. Now that last um, cadence was really what I tried to do with the three shots. That just felt really good on the trigger. Anytime you get under three for nine shots at three different targets, that's pretty good. Now there are a lot of guys in the world that I know can do better than that, but there's a whole bunch more who can't. <laughs> so I feel good about that. All right, here we go. So uh, Matt, give me your pen real quick. I'll, I'll score these up and we'll take them away. So it uh, looks like everything's good here. I'm going to tell you what, that's actually going to score as a five because I'm cracking that, that, uh, uh, that line. And so when you crack the line, that's going to be 12 times five is 60 points. And again, that's my left target. I don't know why I'm so much better on the left target. Here we go. Uh, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times five and four times 12. One, two, three, four, four times three, excuse me, is 12. So that's going to give me a total of 52. 52 points on that center target. And over here, let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times five, and two times three. So that's going to give us the 56. All right. So what we're going to do now. We'll tear these guys off. We'll go out to the uh, shop here and we'll do our, uh, our scoring. I'll go ahead and through the whole scoring process so you can see how we actually end up with a total that you can compare not only against yourself, but against your friends. So the competition side of this thing is actually a little bit of fun too. So when we get people to compete, that's when we see people start to strive to shoot a little bit faster. When you shoot a little bit faster, that's when you see you know, where your weaknesses are because uh, anybody can shoot these targets at this distance accurately very slow. It's now how fast can you go and at what point do you start to degrade your accuracy and what can you do to improve your speed and your accuracy? Whether it be technique or whether it be equipment, we're here to help you do both. So let's go score these targets and see how we did. All right, here we are with our score sheets and our uh, scoring sheet. Okay, this is our targets from the from the range. A lot of people like to take these home because they're kind of fun to show people what you've done. You know, one of the things to keep in mind here, uh, if you look at this uh, timer here, you know, nine shots in 2.3 seconds. That's pretty impressive no matter who you are, really. I mean, you're shooting nine shots at three different targets in 2.3 seconds. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to put our, our, our points down right here. So we have target number one had 60 points. Target number two had 56, if you remember. And target number three also had 56. So our total points down here is going to be 12 uh, 
B2, carry the one, B2, and uh, be 172, okay? So a perfect score is 180. So basically I dropped eight points on the, um, uh, the uh, body shots. And let's go over here to our headshots real quick too. We'll do the same concept on the headshots. I had a 60 on target number one. And that's again, what's interesting, that's that left-handed target. I always seem to do better on that left-handed target. Uh, target number two had uh, 52 points and target number three had 56. So basically, I'm four points down from that, so it's going to be, uh, let's see, 8 and 16 is 168. So there's my points. Now, the time, we're just going to go ahead and total our times up here. Uh, so uh, first time, I believe that's a 7. Is Are, no, are they 2s? Uh, let's see, that could be a 2, 120. And uh, yeah, so 2 and seven, that's 4 and 12 and 20. So I'm going to carry 2. And uh, that's going to be 4 and 11, and um, uh, what do you call that there? That's going to be uh, 15, 19, 29. And then 2 here is 2, 3, 4. And uh, 4 again is 8 and is 11. And uh, 2 more is going to put me at 13.90. Okay, so looking at that, head, headshots is 13.90 uh, seconds. Okay, now on the um, on this guy over here, we're going to go ahead and look at these guys. This is body shots. Two, uh, and that would be uh, five, and this would be seven, and this would be six, 15, 19, 22. I'm going to carry two up here. It's going to be four, six, seven, and then um, uh, four is 11, 27. All right. Here's where the rubber hits the road. Now let me show you how this works. So we're gonna take our time and our points total. We're gonna to take the points and we're gonna divide it by the time. So you see what's gonna happen? I'm gonna take 172 divided by 11.27. And this is where I pull my calculator out. And let's go ahead and do the math for us here real quick. So it's 11, excuse me, 172, 172 divided by 11.27 equals a 15.26, which is not bad. And you saw it right there on camera. So that's not a bad time and that's not a bad score. Okay, I could have had a couple more points and that would have increased that number, but uh, I'm pretty happy with 15.26. Now down here, uh, I've got 168 points and a 13.9. So I'm gonna divide the points by that 13.9. So 168 divided by 13.9 puts me at 12.09. And that's not bad either, but uh, certainly uh, the, uh, the 15.26 uh, is uh, one of my higher scores. And again, that's uh, at our 12 foot distance uh, with the exercise number three. And uh, again, here's, this, here's the time, here it is. Uh, you know, there's my points, there's my time, and here's the overall score is 15.26. And I invite you to come on down here to San Diego and run this thing and see if you can beat that score. I'm Lenny McGill. This is, uh, of course, the Glock Store Performance and Custom Shop right here. We are in San Diego. We've got indoor ranges. We've got a machine shop in the back. Uh, we ship uh, all of our packages out of here, uh, and uh, it's upwards of 1,000 packages a day. Uh, we've got everything you can imagine for your Glock. We can make your Glock a better gun. We can make you a better shooter. So thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in here sometime.